Okay, guys, on the menu today, chicken pot pie. I'm gonna go through it. I already took the liberty of chopping everything up off camera. So I just got a, it was a small potato, so a potato here, bell pepper, celery, onion, chicken. I'm not gonna use all this either, probably half of it. I am gonna use a whole bag of, just any bag of frozen vegetables. The new thing I do now, um, I use this. You'll see at the end how I use that. Heavy cream. This is a pie crust, just a flat um, pyro pie crust. You got some butter, curry gold, and then just some butter unsalted. Some salt, pepper, paprika, garlic, pepper, onion, some table blend, just some random spices you can adjust in this here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna cook the potatoes, put the chicken in some apple cider vinegar to clean it, always clean your chicken. I'm also gonna show you how I um, take this extra stringy, plasticky filly off of the chicken tenderloins and then how I remove the actual so white thing that's in the middle. I'll show you my trick on how to remove that. So yeah, I'm gonna cook this up and I'm gonna show you how I go along. That's all you do. You need a fork, you need a paper towel. So you grab the chicken. I like to put just parchment paper down because I'm just very clean in the kitchen. And I also like to use uh, gloves when I'm in the kitchen, but do whatever you wanna do, your family. So before I clean the chicken and wash the chicken, I take this out because it's a lot easier to do when it's dry. So you just wrap the paper towel around the little white part that you see here. And you put that in between. You see how it's in between? You hold it with the, with the um, opposite hand that you're not holding the fork with. You just go down and that piece comes out smooth every single time. I also just go ahead and remove this little, some people keep this little part on, I don't. This little skin part. I do take the time to take that off and any fat. So you'll be left with this. It does kind of come apart. It's no longer in that shape of a tender, but it's perfect now. It's just straight up the meat. So I'm gonna do that to the rest of them and then I'll come back. There's my chicken sitting in apple cider vinegar and cold water. That's how I clean my chicken. Clean it however you want or don't clean it at all. That is up to you, boo. But while that is sitting out, we're gonna start on our potato. Skillet is hot, a little bit of olive oil down. So I have a medium high heat, getting everything coated. Nice non-stick pan. I'm gonna add those potatoes. While it's in this stage, I like to go ahead and crack the black pepper, a little bit of salt, literally just a, that's all, and then some crushed red. I want to be able to do it in this dish here. It's not that big, just a little small casserole dish. I'm hoping that it's not too much, but we'll see. And now it is time to rinse this from the apple cider vinegar, pat it dry, season it up, and then we're gonna also pan fry that. So I'm gonna show you how that is. So I did just add our bag of mixed vegetables. This is just a um, 12 ounce bag. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Again, I didn't use chicken um, broth or chicken stock, so this is gonna act as my chicken flavoring. This stuff is very powerful, very salty, so please be careful. Add a little bit at a time, because you can add, but you cannot subtract when it comes to that stuff. Once it's in there, it's in there. Trust me. I've made a pie, a chicken pie pie before, and I'm like, man, I use too much. See how that's looking? Like chicken pie pie, baby. We still gotta add the chicken. Gonna season this up a little bit. Gonna do some minced onions. Some Italian seasoning, crushed red pepper, pepper, garlic powder, green lady garlic, onion powder, paprika, smoked paprika, smoked baby. Give it a stir. You do want to taste this mixture though, y'all. You have to taste your food. To see if you, you really just add in either 
you, you're just, you're adding for flavor. I mean, you're tasting for the salt levels. So I'm gonna dip it, let it drip. Perfect. I swear to God, I don't need nothing else. Nothing else. All right. So we're back. But now I'm at the stage. Can we get my stand ready? I'm at the stage where we are cooking the chicken. So season it with whatever you want to season it. I can get onion powder, garlic powder, some table green, here's some parsley for color. Let that cook. I don't really touch it. Because um, that's how you, if you want to get your chicken brown, don't really mess with it. Let it go for about three, four, five minutes and then turn it. But on the side of it here, we do have some butter going. I have a mix of um, the Kerrygold butter and then just some regular butter. Cook down. I'm going to add some onion to that. So what I did off camera, y'all. So this is our mix. I'm going to add this to that. Well, we to put the potatoes in. Because at the end of the day, it's all going to be cooked together anyway. But you're trying to make some type of roux right now. I don't want to get stuff. We're now building the inside of the filling, basically. So as you can see, that has been nice and we're gonna let that cook in butter for a bit. Once that's smelling good, I'm gonna hit it with some salt and pepper really quickly. My son is taking a nap right now, so I am also listening out for him. Alright, so I did flip the chicken, as you can see. So back over here. Make sure it's on like a medium low. That's cooked for a good minute. We're just gonna add some, we're just gonna add some flour now. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I don't really do measurements, y'all. Yeah, it's a little bit. Until you get the consistency that you want. So this is what's gonna basically give you how thick or how loose your pot pie filling is. I don't like a loose filling. That's also why I add potatoes because I feel like potatoes help it not be so watery. Yeah, there we go. That's good enough for me. One thing about these stainless steel pots, ooh baby, they be hot. Switch hands. <laughs> it's definitely hot. In a couple minutes, we're gonna be adding just some water. You can use chicken stock. I'm gonna just be adding water, but you can use chicken stock. But because I'm using this, I'm just gonna use that to sprinkle in it. I'm gonna use that just to sprinkle inside. So I don't have to use chicken stock. But technically that is chicken stock. This is two cups. Now you're just gonna whisk. So it turns into sort of a gravy, y'all, to be honest. See how thick that got? So again, uh, the amount of liquid you put is gonna show what the inside of your filling's gonna look like. So you can definitely add more. I'm gonna add more. Take a cup. Here. So now, this is optional, but I do like to add heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna add that. Now you're gonna start building the inside. You're gonna add your potatoes. Okay, so this is the chicken. I let it cool, and then I chopped it up. Nice and thick. I'm gonna add the chicken in. You're just gonna mix it all in. And this is a, your filling. I already have my oven preheated to 350. Yum. You can eat like you can eat that just like that. It's just it'll be just a little uh, uh what's it called chicken pot pie, pie soup. But you can use olive oil spray. You can use Pam or anything. I'm just gonna use some butter. 
So what I do, you can pour it in just like that. But this is why I had the uh, pie crust that was in the sheet form. Because I like to put this at the bottom. Because I like a good flake. I like the, you know, I like the bread part. Like in cobbers, I like the bread part more than the, the fruit filling. So the same with uh, pot pies. I like the flaky pie crust. It's going to have to be perfect. You can always pinch where the holes are at. But go ahead and put that in there. Take some from the side and repair holes. And I'm adding the croissant on top of mine. So, just a little border, a little bolt for it. I think it's just right. Oh, wow. Y'all, don't you love when that happened? It's just right. Get it all, get all that good stuff out. Ooh, y'all can smell this. Oh, wow. Get everything. All the potatoes. This is beautiful. <laughs> it's gonna be so damn good. This is such a good comfort food. Such a good dinner for cold days. Y'all know I'm in Chicago, so it'd be cold. That's perfect. See some potatoes. He's still in our pot. We're gonna get all that. Okay. I see how it's more on that side. I see. So it is pushing it. But I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do so it won't fall over. So the next step, get your crescent roll. Any brand. The first time I used some the Annie's brand, the organic brand, because that's what I had. It was good. Now I'm using just the Aldi off brand. And I made this, um, it was the first time using the crescent roll. And I'm like, oh my God, it was so good, y'all. I do see that with this Aldi's brand. <laughs> so it's kind of more sticky. Yeah, this is going to have to be just pieces because <laughs> it is really being, acting like it want to be stuck. Come on now. Yeah, it is so hard to take this out right now. All these. It was for the low, so I got it. Okay, I'm about to be done. <laughs> it's not as cute as the first time I made it because this is giving me such a hard time, but it is fine. It's all the same. It's all going to get ate up, baby. Okay, that's good. The last step. The last step. Egg wash. Because you want it to be glossy. You want it to look good. And just start to paint. Paint like the painter you are. Next. To save my oven, this thing is hot, it's heavy. We're gonna put that in there because no one has time for stuff to be spilling. 350 oven, it's going in. I'll check on it in about 30 minutes and I'll be back. 